Let's talk to Isabel Oakshaw, Talk TV's international editor. Isabel, very good morning to you. Good morning. Um, yep, I'm joining you for the revolution. I couldn't agree more with your summary there. I mean, I've been very critical over the last six months to a year of aspects of Boris Johnson's behaviour, but this report is just absolutely ridiculous. Mm. It, it looks vindictive uh, to remove his Commons pass. That's what they've suggested, this 90 days thing. I mean, I can only really think of a, a punishment like that for people who actually went to prison. I yeah. mean, during the Spencer scandal, there are a number of MPs who were uh, proven to have um, abused taxpayers' money to a criminal extent and were actually jailed for it. And I think those MPs probably lost their access to the Commons. Um, have they all gone completely bonkers over in Parliament? I mean, the the backstabbing and the um, vindictiveness and the and the extent to which Boris Johnson's old colleagues uh, are, are now hanging him out to dry this morning is unbelievably mm. ugly to behold. And at the same time, we've got yet more hundreds of migrants coming across the channel. We've got innocent, beautiful young students being randomly stabbed to death in Nottingham. We've got record high taxes. People's mortgages are about to go up. I mean, so some people are finding their mortgages have literally doubled uh, in recent months if they're on interest only mortgages. The state of the country is absolutely dire. Um, so, Mike, I don't know when, when or where we can create the independent republic, but I am in. Well, listen, I'm very pleased to have you uh, join as a member. You might even get a cabinet position if we have a former government. But the point is that people around the country are, as you say, sick to death of what's going on. They want the country fixed. They want the civil service to be doing the things. I mean, this morning we're hearing that they're, they're going to sort of criminalise more people for putting uh, food in the wrong bins. You know, they're going to start chasing you down the road if you do 22 miles an hour instead of 20. You know, the priorities it seems to be in this country are all completely wrong and how about this from tony who says in liverpool boris was found guilty by the committee regarding several gatherings the police apparently cleared him of how does that work i mean it just is a is a complete nonsense and why we're wasting any more time on this I don't know. The man resigned. He is no longer prime minister. There is no point in expending more energy on whether he did or he didn't lie, whatever. I mean, I don't care anymore. I do care um, about the COVID inquiry yes. and we learn lessons from the pandemic so, so that never again um, should our country be put through what it was at the hands of this government. I do care um, that right from the outset, the COVID inquiry is blaming two things, Brexit and austerity, uh, as if a bigger state and yet more spending on public services would somehow have actually prevented the disaster of lockdown. Mm. It wouldn't have. No. So let's get to the nub of the things that are really bringing our country to its knees, which is not actually whether Boris Johnson did or didn't lie or treat the um, vainglorious members of the committee with contempt. I can't exactly. say, frankly, I blame him sometimes for you know all the grandstanding of some of these individuals. Well, they'll never forgive him for not being like them. They'll never forgive people uh, outside of Parliament for voting for Brexit. You know, they are... Uh, I mean, I don't like to see him using the same words as Donald Trump, calling them deranged, because it was only the other day that, Boris, that, that Donald Trump was calling the Miami prosecutor deranged. But the point is that, surely to heavens, they need to understand that the ordinary people of this country in the COVID inquiry want to see questions being asked about everything that's now happening, like the mental health of children, you know, like the collapse of the economy, like the problems of business that people haven't been able to uh, restart their businesses properly. What they don't want is, is some kind of, you know, Ramona-led inquiry, blaming Brexit, blaming austerity, blaming the evil Tories for everything that went wrong. I mean, it's completely ridiculous. You just can't substantiate an argument that the reason everything went wrong over the pandemic was because the Tory government reduced public spending yeah. because, you know, they cut, they attempted, frankly, not very successfully, to reduce the bloated state, to cut the size of the civil service and to do a number of other things to reduce the national debt and the deficit. You can't argue that because they did that, uh, that's why so many people died during COVID. I mean, the reality is actually uh, there was record spending on the NHS, but then when push came to shove, we actually didn't really use much of the NHS. 
uh, during COVID. You know, they requisitioned the private uh, healthcare sector. Lots of hospitals basically lay vacant. We built a whole load of hospitals mm. and nightingales that they then didn't use. There was very high spending on infectious diseases resourcing in the run up to the pandemic. So this is a nonsense. And why does it matter? Well, this inquiry cannot be politicized in this way from the outset. And these statements that were made by various council um, representing vested interests, I should say, for example, the Trade Unions Congress, uh, which is seen as a core participant in the inquiry, went unchallenged. Those were just statements that were read out. Mm. Um, I think that so much of what was asserted was just complete claptrap. Well, exactly right. And surely the point of the COVID inquiry, and I don't wish to be unkind to the bereaved families who have also been represented, but the point of the inquiry is to make sure that if there ever is another pandemic, surely to God, we must have certain red lines where we say, well, we did that last time, we're not doing it this time. But they don't seem set up to come up with that kind of conclusion. A lot of this, and I've said this before, appears to be about trying to make people feel better. Yeah. And whilst that is important, it's not the primary objective of a public inquiry. There's therapy sessions for that. Yeah. Um, and I don't mean that in any heartless way. No, I actually, not. The, the video at the beginning of the, uh, the opening of the inquiry was very, very powerful. It was very moving. What you saw there was a number of people who lost relatives, um, in particular talking about the grotesque restrictions that there were around the normal rituals mm. of, of saying goodbye to a loved one. What I would like to see the inquiry focusing on is not whether those um, losses of normal behaviours around funerals and so on were necessary because of COVID, but whether they were a completely excessive response and a disproportionate response to the threat. Yes. Uh, so that, that doesn't ever happen again, because it's quite clear that those relatives um, are not just um, traumatised by the fact that their loved one died, but the manner in which they had to say or didn't get the chance to say goodbye to their loved yes. ones. Yes, and I'll make a bet with you right now, Isabel, that the question that I would want to have asked, which is why were relatives not allowed to hold the hands of their uh, dying uh, elderly relatives? Why were they not allowed to do that? I bet that question doesn't get asked because nobody's got the answer for it. Because there is no answer, there can never be a justification for that. And I'll say it now, I would have broken any rule like that. Yeah, me in too. A, you know, if I had an elderly relative in a care home who was being shut off from the world, supposedly for their own good, I would have climbed ladders and gone in the windows and done whatever it took because this was cruelty beyond imagination. Mm. It really was. Stay with us if you would as well. We've got a few other things we need to talk to you about as well. Thank you very much indeed for being here. Isabel Oakshaw, uh, Talk TV's international editor, with us this morning. Uh, we'll be taking your calls as well because we need to hear from all of you. 0344 499 1000. We're not going to continue uh, the sort of witch hunt over Boris Johnson, not because he didn't do anything wrong, but just because you don't want to hear it. This is Talk TV.